nothing to feel bad about. La, whenever I needed you, because your mother always late, so I would call you, and you would be there. If it was something important, I had to be there by a certain time, La would be there. And I, we, it, we did it together, and I appreciate y'all. And y'all, y'all lucky to have her. I looked at me like I have friends that didn't have their parents this long. You know, so this is a blessing from God, and we're gonna listen. We're getting through it, and we're gonna continue to get through it, okay? Because we're gonna do it for her. Because it's been a couple times this week. I was mad. I want this, and I was like, no. Nope. They said, what would Jesus do? No, what would Mommy do? And I, well, I, and I'm gonna do it. I'm doing it for her. So again, I thank you guys for coming out, and I'm gonna miss her. That's my girl. I ain't getting to bed and fall out the bed like she did with her. When she would want me to get in the bed, Desmond would get in the bed, Tristan would get in the bed. And two weeks ago, she she did. She asked me, and I said, you know what? Let me just get in this bed with her. Cause to me, the bed was too small. I'm gonna be on it, but that's what she wanted. She wanted me. She just just she thanked me. I was crying one day. We were talking one night, and she was like. Do you know how lucky you are that you could have a conversation with your dying mother? That's what she said to me. There's people that would love that. So I'm going to leave it at that. I thank you for those conversations with me these four years. I mean, she was a virtuous woman. That was one thing I could say. As Delta's we were the book, my mother was that virtuous woman. And I thank God that he chose me to be her daughter. Amen. Andrew pretty much said a lot of things I was going to say, so I just know that um, my mom and I, we were Taurus and Jim and I living together in a household, <laughs> and um, I was the first, so I guess she did a lot of learning with me, Woo. but um, it's only when you become an adult, like a woman that you start to really understand what it is, the woman and the mother, that you understand what your mom is to you. And that's what I learned, really what my mom is to me. She was always there for me. Anytime I needed anything, anything, she never questioned me about it. She just did it, she just did it for me. She taught me how to be a mother. So I, I just do whatever I can for my kids. Same thing my mother did for me, both of them, whatever they did for me. Um, she, education was so important to her and she got my daughter into books and reading like I was. She, she taught us that reading was so fundamental and important, Edu you know, like learning. You can learn from anything and everything. Um, you know, she, she loved people. And like my sister said, I think we both love people. We adopt people, bring people into our homes and, and just love people like she did. And my grandmother did. I think it's just something that just gets passed down. Um, she, she just was, she was amazing. And I, I wrote on Facebook. Who am I going to have? Even when my mom was sick and laying in that bed, she would say, Valerie, you need to go home now. It was late all the time when I would leave there. And I don't like you on the road this late at night, traveling those 40 minutes. You make sure you call when you get home. Now, mommy might forget 10 minutes later <laughs> that I was going to be on that road going home. But in the present time, she knew that I was going to be on that road going home. And so she would tell me to call when I got home. So I wrote on Facebook, who's going to, who's going to call? Who, who am I going to call when I get home? The comments. I had my mother to call. So I got home that night and I looked at my daughter. I said, well, I'm getting ready to go to bed. Now, as an orphan, <laughs> I'm a 61-year-old orphan. And I said, well, my, I guess that makes me a grand orphan. <laughs> so, huh? daddy more things like, come get me. So, so now, you know, I just bid my mother farewell. I thank her for a job well done. I thank her. 
for forgiving me, you know, and um, I love her dearly. I'm going to miss her, but I thank her for the lessons that she taught me. And I just, um, you know, she, she and I had talks in the bed, laying next to each other while she was sick. She and I had talks sitting in the chair. And she, she, she even said things to me, you know. She, she apologized to me at some things. And I, I, I even said to her at one point, I said, Mommy, why didn't you love me? <laughs> she looked at me like she was mad. How dare you ask me that question? <laughs> why did, she loved me. She did love me. She was wonderful, and I'm going to miss her. And I thank you guys for coming and showing your support. I truly do. Thank you. Indeed, we are grateful for these wonderful words and expressions. We're going to have the obituary read by Mrs. Yvonne Patterson, followed by our next musical selection and then a word from the Lord. Good morning. God bless you all this morning. What a wonderful outpouring of love. It's good to see everyone this morning. We're just so encouraged that you're all here and showing all of the great love and the support for this great woman of God. I'm Yvonne Garrett Patterson and I'm the niece of, of Theodora and Robert Gray, and the stepdaughter of Thomas Henderson, Theodora's uh, brother, one of her, her brothers. Uh, my mother, Doris Henderson, uh, as a single mother, heard the migration to the New Jersey call, a northern migration, and uh, Theodora and Robert greeted my mother with love. Robert and Theodora provided great love and compassion, care, and nurturing, and um, thank God for the two of them and their marriage, their relationship, because it has created the great well that we are drinking from and will continue to drink from. Just amazing, amazing people. So at this time, I'm going to uh, acknowledge uh, some of the wonderful memorial tributes that uh, have been provided to honor Aunt Teddy, as we call her. This tribute is from uh, Vernon Temple AME Church, 6 Hawthorne Lane in Southampton, Bermuda. Uh, this letter has come from Dr. Reverend Leonard Santucci, pastor and Bermuda senator, retired. Thank you for your time and patience as we read these acknowledgments. I am pleased to pause and join with the family church, the community of Sister Gray, as we celebrate her life, witness, and contribution. I was blessed to have a privilege of serving as the pastor to the Gray family from June 2005 until June 2013. Those were some good years for all of us as we navigated the terrain of life seeking to do the master's will. Family, please know that she will live in our hearts and heads for eternity. The lessons taught, the deeds done, the precious memories created will remain with us. I have been blessed to serve the family both as a pastor and a friend. Sister Teddy Gray is known in Bermuda as a Vernon Temple AME church member. On behalf of your Bermuda connection, we stand with you in prayer and through your loss. Again, Pastor Dr. Santucci. At this time, I'd like to recognize Orange Township Public Schools from Gerald, Dr. Gerald uh, Fitzhugh, Superintendent of Schools, Orange Public Schools. It is with a heavy heart that I extend my deepest condolences to you on behalf of the Orange Public Schools community on the passing of Ms. Theodora Gray. 
As a proud product and retired educator of Orange Public Schools, she undoubtedly left an indelible mark on the lives and countless students, colleagues, and administrators. As we mourn the loss of Mrs. Theodora Gray, we may also celebrate her remarkable life and the profound impact she has had on our community. Let us find solace in the countless memories, lessons, and moments of inspiration that she shared with us throughout her distinguished career. Please know that our thoughts and prayers are with you during this difficult time. May you find comfort in the cherished memories of Ms. Theodora Teddy Gray and the lasting legacy she, she has left behind. This resolution of respect and loving memory of Theodora Gray is from Susan McCartney, Mayor. Whereas the Township of West Orange, New Jersey notes the sadness in the passing of Theodora Henderson Gray, a beloved and esteemed resident who peacefully passed away surrounded by family on Tuesday, May 7th, 2024. And whereas Theodora Henderson Gray was born on June 20th, 1938 to the late Gordon and Hattie Henderson in Orange, New Jersey, she was also welcomed by her siblings, John Gordon Jr., Thelma and Thomas, affectionately known as Teddy. She was raised in Oakwood Place, then family moved to Central Place. She attended the Orange Public School System and graduated from Orange High School in 1956. And whereas Theodora met her soulmate Robert Gray in 1958, he noticed her walking with friends and immediately dropped off his friends, invited her out to ice cream. As they, sat, as they said, the rest is history. The lovebirds married October 16, 1960 in Union Baptist Church, and to this blessed union were born daughters Valerie and Andrea. The family, will soon move, the family soon moved to West Orange in 1970. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that Mayor Susan McCartney and West Orange Township Council honors the memory of Theodora Henderson Gray, May the memory of her generous nature, spiritual strength, and guidance continue to be a source of inspiration to those who were fortunate enough to have known her. Again, Susan McCartney, Mayor. Essex County Board of County Commissioners. Dear family, on behalf of the entire Essex County Board of County Commissioners, please accept the enclosed commendations acknowledging the life and accomplishments of your loved one, Theodora Henderson Gray. As the legislative branch of the county, we pause and recognize her by documenting her life and efforts through a resolution of this type. As a resident of Essex County, Mrs. Gray will be remembered for her outstanding contributions to our community. And again, accept our condolences, and you know that the legislators of Essex County send their heartfelt sympathy and well wishes to you and your entire family. This wonderful plaque in recognition of her contribution from Essex County commissioners. So dear loved ones, at this time, we'll take a look and read together uh, Teddy's life story. Thank you for your love and for your patience. On Tuesday, May 7th at 6.18 p.m., Theodora E. Gray Knee Henderson transitioned from labor to reward at home in West Orange, New Jersey, with both her daughters by her side. Theodora, affectionately known as Teddy, was born in Orange, New Jersey, June 20th, 1938, to the late Gordon and Hattie Freeman Powell Henderson. She was the youngest of five children, three boys and two girls. Theodora was educated, was educated in the Orange Public School System, where she graduated from Orange High School in 1956. She went on to further her education at Panzer College of Physical Education in East Orange, New Jersey, before joining New Jersey Bell as a telephone operator. Theodora met Robert C. Gray, the love of her life, in 1958, and they married on October 16, 1960, at Union Baptist Church in Orange, New Jersey. To this union, two wonderful daughters were born, Valerie Ann and Andrea Regina. 
They were married for 61 years until Robert's death, April 20th, 2022. After marriage, Theodora stated, started a career in education as a teacher's aide at Lincoln Avenue School in Orange. Theodora continued her education and obtained a bachelor's degree in elementary education from Newark State College, Kane University, and then followed her dream of becoming a teacher. She began teaching at Cleveland Street School in Orange and later returned to school and earned her master's degree in education from Jersey City State University, New Jersey City University. Theodora taught for 34 years in Orange Public School System before retiring. She loved teaching so much that after retiring, she became a mentor teacher for new teachers in the Newark Public School System. Theodora loved children and throughout her career was always known for bringing a child or two home. And at times you would catch her on Main Street buying student clothes or whatever they needed. She was very instrumental in assisting students with furthering their education by attending college and assisting them throughout. While stern, she believed all children should have the opportunity to learn and did what she could to make that happen for them. Theodora took pride in being a teacher in Orange, the same city she was educated in. That deserves an applause. <laughs> Theodora was a lifelong member of St. Paul AME Church in East Orange, where she sang in the gospel choir, along with her husband, I like to say, Uncle Robert, we know he was a great singer as well. And the, she, Teddy loved, loved being from Orange and was always proud to tell anyone who would listen. She loved people and they loved her back. A 10 minute trip to ShopRite would, would turn into 40 minutes out, a 40 minute outing. Theodore Gray knew everybody. And if we went somewhere, I guarantee you, before she left, she would make a connection and know somebody who knew somebody she knew. She loved bowling and bowled on the OEA League. She loved traveling and reading. Bermuda was her favorite place to visit where she made lifelong friends and visited yearly until her health started to decline. Theodora loved helping and, and caring for people from her organizations, including her book clubs, quilting club, birthday club, New Jersey Retired Teachers Association, Lambda Capta Mu Sorority Incorporated. And the one organization that she was most proud of was Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. I wear the colors to honor that. So we also want to initiate the, the pinned her by her daughter, Andrea, on November the 13th, 1993, as a member of the New Jersey alum chapters, 34 Elements of Change, where she was number seven on her line. The daughter was a great wife, mother, grandmother, great grandmother, aunt, and friend to all who knew and loved her. She was preceded in death by her parents, husbands, siblings, John, Thelma, Gordon, and Thomas, and nephews, Vincent, Brittany, Richard, and Brian Henderson. Theodora leaves to mourn her daughters, Valerie Ann, Gray Curtis, Leroy of Flanders, New Jersey, and Andrea R. Gray Cotton of West Orange, New Jersey, grateful grandchildren, Lance Robert Curtis and Leandra Elise Curtis of Flanders, New Jersey, and Timothy Desmond Cotton of West Orange, New Jersey, great children, Tristan Dior Cotton of West Orange, New Jersey, sisters-in-law Thelma Kreps of Dayton, Beach, uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, Ruth Grant of Jacksonville, Florida, and Louis Thompson of East Orange, New Jersey. Granddaughter Lisa Perkins Bryant, Lamont, bonus grandchildren Marquetta Walker, Lene and Lakia Bryant, Zihar, Masalo, and, and special friends Virginia Perkins and Margaret Voorhees Lowe. She leaves many nieces, nephews, cousins, other relatives, and a host of friends. There are plenty of people we would like to thank for their extreme kindness shown to our mom. 
However, thank you will never be enough for Harriet Jews, Pastor Lakeisha Bryant, Linda Jackson for their visits, David Williams, Lisa and Lamont, Brian for their continuous love and care. Special thanks to Aid Pademi, Nadurum, and the staff of VNA Hospice, especially Aid V Nurses, Barcella and Rudy, and social worker Jamie. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. We'll continue to go in love and dip into that great well that we have been given through the love of the Gray and Henderson family. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have to be all right with this because two weeks ago, when I came to see Mama Gray, she had to talk with me. And um, she said, I think Jesus is mad at me. <laughs> and I said, why is that Mama? She said, cause I said something not too nice to him. And I said, well, tell me what you said to Jesus. <laughs> and she said, I told him I was gonna beat his butt. And I said, you told Jesus she was gonna beat his butt? And she said, yeah. I said, well, why would you tell him that? And she said to me, she said, because I'm mad at him because he keeps leaving me here when I'm telling him that I'm tired. Um, and she just began to talk to me as she always would. And um, I said, well, if you're okay with it and you're making peace, I said, I guess I have to be okay with it too. And she looked at me and she said, yes, you have to be okay with it because I'm telling you to. And if anybody knows me, I do what Mama Gray says to do. So pray my strength. The Bible says that in our weakness, God's strength is made perfect. So I am solely standing on God's strength today. But I do want to say to Andrea and Val, thank you for sharing your mom with me. You have not gotten rid of me. I'm still going to show up as always. Um, and to Andrea, job well done. What people will seem as a sacrifice, she took it on as an honor and a privilege. So we can put our hands together for that, right? Amen. So I chose this song, and you probably won't hear the song saying at a funeral, but there was one thing that Mama always exemplified, whether she was well, and even when she was sick, she was always thankful. She always said thank you. Whether you gave her a glass of water, whether you just showed up to visit her, she always said thank you. And she was grateful for all the people that showed her love back. So I'm a product of her fifth grade class. And once she kept loving me, I, I kept coming back. So here we go. Amen. I don't need a microphone, and because I'm nervous, I'm going to put it down. <laughs> so just going to wait for me. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the whole Give because God divine Jesus Christ Jesus
Today we give thanks with a grateful heart for Theodora Gray. Let us pray. With thanksgiving and praise, O oh Lord, we bless and we honor the magnificence of your divine name. That in this moment where you promise that you would be a comfort for those that mourn and to wipe away tears from the eyes of those who weep. We trust in you, for there is no other. Comfort this family, not just through word and deed, but through divine action that past this moment, you will still be there moments of reflection to bring laughter to ease the hurt stories of wisdom to bring counsel in difficult times we ask this O oh lord with a grateful heart because of all that you've given we know that all things are indeed possible and it's in your name, Jesus, the one who Teddy could talk to. We say thank you and we bless and we honor your wonderful name. Amen. On this afternoon, the words found in the 31st proverb that 10th stanza of this hymn 
starts out in this 31st chapter as a mother's wisdom to her son to be a good person, to be mindful of the needs of other people, to not get caught up in mess, but to be one who would be available to help and to bring peace. And then when it gets to this 10th portion, it begins, begins the words that were actually a hymn where it asks, who can find a virtuous, a capable, a woman of strength? And would say that she is far more precious than jewels. The King James says, a price above rubies. And if I had to have my way, I would say that Teddy is the woman of our text. Because what does it mean to be a woman of strength? When we think of this text, it's often read or used in churches for a Women's Day theme or read at weddings to describe a bride and a husband who has found a good thing. This proverb, this song ascribes to a woman about the description of high moral standards. But I think of it today as it recognizes a woman where intelligence is the torch of wisdom. That's the motto of Delta Sigma Theta. Theodora Gray recognized intelligence as the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skill and to be a beacon of experience to help others know the quality of what it meant to be wise. And Theodora Gray represents this woman of the text as the woman of our text. One whose brand was integrity, creativity, and concern because she had a, always had a care for the well-being of other people. Teddy, of course, one who when you got to know her, knew exactly what you were dealing with. Somebody who would be honest, someone who could and would be trusted. Someone who could share with you, starting with her stories about Orange and East Orange, she could identify where everything was, what had been there, who had lived there, how long they were there when they moved, what kind of trouble they got in, what kind of career they had. Teddy could be the unofficial historian of many of our lives. She could share her own experiences and the wisdom she gained through a lifetime of service and her commitment to the excellence of anyone put into her care. That's why the text today, which speaks of a woman who exhibits strength that is unmatched, yet easily able to be passed on through the example of the choices she had made to become a roadmap for generations that would follow not just as some matriarchal brand in a patriarchal society, but as a commander, someone who knew what it was to take charge of situations and things in a life. Basically, if something needed to be done, Teddy was going to get it done. And when we look at the text, we often think about somebody, if 
we really read Proverbs and were honest. Somebody who got up and made breakfast because it talks about a capable, virtuous woman who took care of her family, made sure things were done, went shopping, made sure the household had everything that it needed. But if we knew Teddy, she was so much more had a concern and a care for her family. Yes, Robert, when they married, she stuck with him and he with her through sickness and certainly in health. They made one another's life matter and enjoyed each other even when they would fuss and she would get on him about not taking care of himself. Like you mentioned, she'd get in that Chrysler 300 and be flying into the parking lot. And I used to get her and Alfreda's Chrysler confused, but Teddy had to hemi. You, you might blame it on the car, but it was her foot on the accelerator. But she always made sure she was where she needed to be. And it was Teddy, who even when she had her own physical situations, you could always know the concern she had by the tone of her voice. Her voice which could calm and her laugh which could soothe. And when she pointed that finger and looked with them glasses and would start telling her story, you knew she had you. She ha you had her. The attention was paid. And she was going to walk you down the line of everything you needed to know to help you to be better by knowing that she knew a better way. That's Teddy, the woman of our text. I would marvel and, and, and look at her, how she cared for her brother when he was in the nursing home. She'd go see about Tommy, knowing herself she wasn't well. But she always did what she needed to do for someone else. That's why her daughters, it was easy, grandchildren, for you to do for her. Because if you needed her, she was going to do it for you. Do I have a witness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teddy was, she was a woman of virtue, a priceless jewel who represented life well lived to the benefit of the kingdom of God, a kingdom that was about love and joy and peace by always caring about other folk. She knew who everyone was. And if she didn't know you, 15 minutes later, she could tell you your name and she knew everything about you, you knew about her, and she would invite you in to her life. We need more Teddies in this world. That's why the woman of our text named Teddy was a part of a history in the life of all of us that could be repeated. Folk could have confidence in her ability and know she could be trusted with whatever she put her hands to and on because when we saw Teddy, we knew Teddy was capable and able. God put into Teddy's hand, a husband who she sure enough loved all the days of her life. He put into her hands two daughters, Valerie and Andrea, who she was proud of and would always be telling people about them and how she always only ever wanted the best for them, how she loved and supported them and always had a positive message about their life, talked about her grandchildren whom she cherished and adored and celebrated and looked to the next generation with her great-grandson, that generations and years from now, when we think about her, like the woman in the text, the woman of our text named Teddy, we'll call her blessed. Blessed like those who she taught, the ones that excelled at school and those that were challenged, yet she gave them the encouragement to overcome every obstacle. Friends that laughed and found comfort in their times through her smile, through her jokes, and her melodious laughter. 
I'm first-hand witness that Teddy knew how to tell a joke and she knew how to take a joke. She could start a joke on my good friend Betty Parrish Mensa and they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Robert get in the middle of it, but Teddy would get the last word. That's why I asked Betty today, who got the last word? And it was certainly Teddy, the woman of our text, one of strength, one who was kind, one who was patient, one who truly let intelligence be the torch of her wisdom to let her light shine intelligence to encourage everyone to go to school one of intelligence to help people know that there was an alternative means to the things that life sometimes throws at us a woman of intelligence who knew what it was to understand that trouble does not last a lifetime because she found joy in her life. That's why the woman of our text named Teddy knew what it was to let her light shine, that people could see it clearly, giving glory to the God of her salvation, the one who she put her trust in every day, where the hymn writer said, morning by morning, new mercy I see. All I've needed your hands have provided because Teddy knew what it was to care and to trust, knew what it was to have value and to have integrity, knew what it was to love even what folk might call the least of these to show compassion and care and concern. And so we give God praise for the woman of our text who was a woman of strength, a woman of virtue, a woman of integrity, a, a woman of love, a woman who considered her family, a woman who couldn't be compromised, who knew what it was to have value and instill in others that same value to let people know they were loved, to let folk know they were valued and precious, not just in God's sight, but in hers as well. How many of you glad Teddy loved you? How many of you glad that she never gave up, but she always considered and kept all of us in her concern? We thank God for Teddy. We thank God for her, and I know somewhere she's looking at Robert and saying, you don't have the holes, for the oxygen, I don't have the defibrillator. We can enjoy what was promised to us. That's why we can hold, as we sang, to God's unchanging hand. Let me thank the good people at Woody's Home for Services. Uh, Sharon and all of them and the way in which they have served this family during this time. Let me thank the Reverend Melvin Eugene Wilson and the good people of this church, St. Matthew's Amy Church, for allowing us this opportunity uh, to utilize their facility for making it available. Uh, for all of us who will be going to the cemetery, we're going to follow behind the good people of Woody's as they will give us further direction. Brother Rudy, if you would come. I know he made the announcement at the beginning, but we're going to ask him to make the announcement as well. And the family uh, is going to go out first. May the work I've done speak for me. May the work I've done speak for me when I'm resting in my grave there is nothing left to say may the work I've done 
speak for me. May the life I live speak for me. May the life I live speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing else to say. May the work I've done speak for me. On behalf of Great Family and Woody Freedom Home, we would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you. Well, actually, kindly shown to them during these hours here. Miss Teddy and the staff over there, Woody's, uh, we go back a long ways. Ladies and gentlemen, well, over at Woody's, we don't take funerals for granted. We take them one at a time because we like family. Andrea and uh, Val, you know how we feel about your staff over there, and I personally feel about you all. Before you leave here, you don't have but three things in life. It's faith, family, and friends. Your mother kept the faith. She kept all her friends. Nobody could go back and talk about her badly. But she kept that faith. Ladies and gentlemen, you can name all your friends on one hand by right now. But she was a friend to all in here. So when we leave here today, and I put my little red tie on, and my red socks, because I know she would want me to do that for her today. So y'all don't have to live. Put your head down, lift your head high. As the songwriter said, it's going to be all right in the morning. If it stop raining, sun might come out today. If it don't, it'll be all right. So we're going to take over to Rosedale Cemetery where her and Mr. Mr. Robert can knock it off. And uh, she always wanted to be on top of them, so we're going to put her on top of them. <laughs> we're going to put her on top. <laughs> we're going to put her on top. After we leave the Rosedale Cemetery, the family will invite all of you back to over there to Bell Italia, where they have a little small meal prepared for all. But when you go over there today, leave a plate. Leave a little plate there. Because all of everybody in here, including me, she fed at that house over there. And I think that'd be a good honor. Or after we leave. So we're gonna have the family and friends view. We're gonna take the family out first, and those wish to view may view afterwards. Again, they say thank you. Let us all stand, please. One glad morning. When this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. There's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this away. If your soul's not angered in Jesus, it will surely drift away 
sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name on the road. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. For I'll be somewhere listening, somewhere listening, somewhere listening for my name. Somewhere listening, somewhere listening, somewhere listening for my name. I'm going to lay down my sword and shield. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, gonna lay down my sword and shield. Study war no more. Oh, I ain't gonna, ain't gonna study war no more. Oh, I ain't gonna study war no more. Study war no more. Study war no more. By and by, when the morning comes, when all the saints have, we will tell the story and we'll understand it better. We're sinking by and by when the morning comes, when. And we will tell the story. I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home on the morning train. Midnight train might be too late. I'm going home on the morning train. I'm going home on the morning train. Oh, I'm going home. Midnight train might be too late. I'm going home. I'm going home on the morning train. Oh, I'm going home. Midnight train, my I be too late. I'm going home on the morning train. Oh, I'm going home. 